coming up. Prophecy and hearing the voice of God. We dive deep into the prophetic with special guest John Paul Jackson for an uninterrupted chat you don't want to miss. Next on Joni. Everyone has a story. In the spiritual world, God is greater than anything that is out there. Nothing is too difficult for Him. Every life has something to share. The Bible says the Lord is good and He knoweth those that trust in Him. So if you trust in Him, He knows you and He will take care of you. Forgiving others is not optional. It is necessary to walk in freedom. From tragedy to triumph, your memories will always be of the adventure, not the arrival. So savor the ride. This is real talk about real topics that will change your life. Remember, no matter what you're going through, God is always there for you. So grab a seat and join the conversation. This is Joni Table Talk. Well, we've all had those moments. We hear that still small voice and it often directs us to do something that goes against our human nature, like showing someone forgiveness. But it's often followed by the question, was that God? <laughs> so today we're looking at hearing the voice of God. Joining me around the table is my dear friend, April Simons. How are you? I'm doing great. Excited. And I see you have your beautiful sister, Dodie, here today. <laughs> By the way, she told me to say that before we started. But, uh, your, your beautiful mother, Dodie Osteen, welcome. You. You're one you. of the ladies at the table. I know. I'm so thrilled. I'm so excited. And another special friend that I've known for many, many years and love her so much. She's in town, and I asked her to join me around the table, Karen Wheaton. Thank you. How it's are so you? good to be here. It's so good I to love have it. you. I love it. This I'm is going to be good. I'm ready. I have a thousand questions. <laughs> I'm ready to get started. <laughs> and Cindy Murdoch, how are you? Hey, I'm great. Thank you. You. And one of your favorite guests at Table Talk, yes. yes, he's back, John Paul Jackson. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you. It's great to be back. I love being here. So um, we're talking about hearing the voice of God. Mm -hmm. You know, I know your testimony, John Paul, mm -hmm. and I can tell the people listening that God was speaking for a very long time to John Paul, and uh -huh. he would not uh -huh. listen, uh -huh. and he would not uh -huh. surrender. Uh -huh. And big feet um, on his big table. he put his he's <laughs> his put his, desk. his you remember that his big feet on his big corporate desk with his big head, and that's and true. not listen to the voice of God. Don't you love that's a terrible introduction to give you, but people are just like, oh, John Paul, yeah. he he hears from God and interprets dreams. But you know what? It's true. You had to surrender, and it wasn't I easy. Did thing for you, was it? No, it was not an easy thing. My, my family, I'm a fifth generation Christian. And so my family and my mother and father in particular had, had plans for me. And I didn't want to do those plans because mm -hmm. I didn't want to, I did not, not want to go into the ministry at all. But yeah. God had other plans too. And he wins, doesn't he? Yes, he, he does. does. And Thank he, God. that, that it, he kept speaking to you. He did. And it, was it an audible voice? Was it in your head? Sometimes was it audible, sometimes in my head, sometimes in, in my heart, sometimes through circumstances. And something would happen and God, and I just heard this voice said, son. Mm. And I knew, I go, uh-oh. Yes. This is, God did this. And there's no doubt about it. I knew it was the hand of God. And then he sent a, a modern day prophetess. Ruth from Ward Heflin Jerusalem. from Jerusalem, Israel, oh, yeah. to come to Dallas, Texas, yeah, to get yeah. on a radio show. Right. She's saying, God sent me right. to speak to a young man. What right. did she say exactly? There's a, the Lord tried to go to Dallas because there was a gifted young man that's gifted to dreams and visions who was resisting the call of God on his life. Wow. And that she wanted them to do it. God wanted her to do a program on dreams and visions and how God speaks today. Mm -hmm to awaken this young man and it, that he would call in and that she was to identify him when he did and that it would change his future. Oh and so John Paul's sitting there in his office praying for the young man to be oh, obedient. Oh I had no clue it was me, that's true. I had, that tells you how obstinate I was, I oh had my no clue. But it was touching your heart to the point uh -huh. that you're like closing your door and listening every day to see what happens. Yeah, well, I, was, I, I closed my door because I was wailing so hard and I thought I was I literally was crying out loud, loudly, and I thought I was crying because uh, I was interceding for that young man mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. the Lord had me call in. And even then, I thought I was just calling in like other callers. You still put a fleece out, though. I did. I put it, a was, fleece it was out. a live radio show. All these people are calling. Right. And so he says, finally, he says, okay, because the Lord's saying, it's you, it's you, it's you. Yeah. And finally he says, okay, well, if they take my call live, which they hadn't even been doing that, there's so many people calling. It was on hold, let put you on hold. Yeah. 
Good. So yeah. you called and what happened? I heard you're live on the air. <laughs> and then you stuttered around. Oh, I did more than stutter, it was horrible. <laughs> And then what did That's Ruth bad. say? And she's in the right in the the studio at the right, radio she's station. Right, live on the air, and she said, "Young man, what took you so long to oh call?" Oh my goodness! goodness. Good heavens! <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't know that. There's I hope. love that story. There's okay, hope. I had to. There's hope. There's hope I had to share that little just to kind of yeah. give you some background. So, can we hear the voice of God? How do we know it's the voice of God? Or do you have? the gift of prophecy to hear it? These are all great questions, but the simplest answer is that every believer can hear the yes. voice yes. of God. Yes. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. And before you um, wax eloquent about it, I know you will. <laughs> and Dodie, here you and your husband, uh, your late husband, who's now with the Lord, John Osteen. You guys were married in ministry how many years? 58 years. Wow. I just had my 50, well, 44 years, four months and four days we were married. But he went to heaven, but I had my 58th anniversary just last week. But anyway, he did. He had to hear the voice of God to get him out of the situation that he was in. He hadn't been to seminary where they taught about healing. But just before he got the baptism in the Holy Ghost and knew, John Paul, that Jesus did do miracles still, we had a little girl that was born with a birth injury. Mm -hmm. Thank God he sought God. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't, would probably be in a wheelchair today. Lisa's one of the yes. best teachers of the Word of God I've ever heard. And then I would have been dead 31 years ago. Yes. I was given up to die. So thank God he learned yes. about healing. And the Lord healed yes. you from cancer. Yes, yes. 31 was, years ago. Which was an amazing thing. But you had to learn all through the years to, to hear the voice of God. I'd, yes. And he was good at listening. Yes. Sometimes I'm not so good at listening. I'm trying to be better. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about that, John Paul. Hearing the voice of God, how do we do that? Well, one, you have to have a relationship with him. You have to have a hunger for him. Mm -hmm. And you have to have a relationship. I remember one time when I first started out in ministry and the Lord was working with me, I was sitting at my desk and I hear a quiet voice say, move. And I go, and I kind of startled and I go, what? And he goes, get up now. And I mean, I jumped out of my chair. I ran across the office. I didn't even know where I was going. By the time I got about 15 to 20 feet across the office to the door, a car crashes through the wall, hits my chair, demolishes oh my, my desk. Goodness. And a car had uh, avoided another car at an intersection and mm. lost control of the car, <laughs> went right through the brick mm. office building wall oh and would have crushed me. Oh and had I not wall. obeyed, I didn't even know what I was to do. I just knew get up and move. And I thought the door's the best, best place to go to. Oh, so, so I Thank went God. there. And so sometimes you don't know where the Lord is Ooh. telling you to go or what the Lord is telling you to do. You just know someone, the voice of the Lord outside of me yes. is commanding me yes, or right. is, is directing me and I need to respond, mm -hmm. need to respond to this. Well, I, I told you some time ago, that is probably about a year and a half ago. This has never happened to me before, except one time I was in the bed, sound asleep, Marcus is beside me and I heard the audible voice of God say my name, Joni. And it woke me up and I looked at Marcus because I thought he had said my name, but he was sound asleep. And then I thought, did I dream that? You know, you have all, so mm -hmm. I let, closed my eyes again and heard Joni. And then I was like, okay, Lord. <laughs> you know, and you told me, what, what, I said, what does that mean, John Paul, when the Lord sa says your name twice and you said? That every time that God's audibly spoke in scripture, he spoke audibly twice. Samuel, Samuel, Saul, mm -hmm. Saul, Jacob, Jacob, mm -hmm. Abraham, Abraham, every time. And, what, what, and I ask you, what did that mean? Because I, I had no idea. Yeah, it's, a, it's a witness. The second voice is a, is a witness. He always does a, has a witness of everything that he says for us to do. Is he trying to get our attention? Definitely get our attention okay. so that we, we don't hesitate. <laughs> so we don't hesitate. <laughs> right. Wow. So you told me to pay attention. Pay attention. That the Lord's going exactly. to try to show attention. me some things. Okay. Like verily, verily. He yeah. said, said it twice. Oh, uh, wow. When he says your name mm. twice, it's pay attention to what I'm yeah. about to say. So that's the only time that's ever help, happened to me, and I'm not... I don't, I don't think we should go around praying, God, I want you to audibly speak to me, right. but he has done it. Mm -hmm. He did it in scripture right. mm -hmm. and he's done it for you. He did yes. it for me. Mm -hmm. But how else do, do, can people hear the voice of God? Well, there's, there's such things as just simply circumstances. Circumstances and people go, well, circumstances, how, how does that work? The Lord will plant something in you. And I'll give you an illustration of that. We were, I was living in Moline, Illinois. I planted a church there, turned that over to my, to my associate and was looking to move. We had, we had an opportunity to move and was given, if we'd moved there, we would, we would have been given a chalet at the base of the Matterhorn in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. We were also looking to move to either Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina or Portland, Oregon or Dallas, Fort Worth. 
didn't know which one to go to. And I heard just this internal voice is just knowing. And I heard him say, tomorrow I will speak to you. Mm-hmm. Didn't hear an audible voice, just, I just knew that I knew. Mm-hmm. It was the Lord saying, tomorrow I will speak to you. Tomorrow I will speak to you. And so I, I responded by how? And he said, read the newspaper. And I go, read the newspaper? <laughs> so I get up in the morning and I'm waiting for God to speak to me. It's, nothing's happening and noon is coming. And I'm thinking, Lord, you said you'd speak to me in the morning. And then he reminded me, I said, read, read the newspaper. And so he's, and then I heard, he just said, I will speak to you in the newspaper. So guess what? I read the newspaper, nothing on page one. And I turned to page two and in big letters on the second page of the newspaper said, Fort Worth, Texas, here we come. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh my. And I knew wow. this was the Lord. Wow. Now, was the article from God? Yeah. Did, the, right. did, the, did the guy writing it know what he was doing? <laughs> no, but the Lord yeah. used that, that headline to speak to me and tell me, you're going to Fort Worth, not to Switzerland, mm-hmm. not to Portland, right. not to Raleigh, you're going to Fort well, Worth. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting because, um, and we'll talk about this later, but the Lord kind of speaks to you in headlines. Yes, he and does. That, that Prophetically, yeah. that's the way he speaks to you. Well, um, I want to ask April, so mm-hmm. how, how has the Lord spoken to you? Because we're, we're all believers sitting here. Right. And we've all heard from the Lord. How does he speak to you? Well, he did speak audibly to me one time, but something that I thought of, Mama and I were together in Houston, and we were driving the car. I had two kids coming from Dallas to Houston driving their first time. And I was in mid-conversation, and my mom was driving, and all of a sudden she grabbed my arm. I don't know if you remember this. And she said, Let's pray right now for Garrison and Savannah. And I thought, she just interrupted my story. But she, you know, she felt the need. She prayed uh-huh. simply, God, I thank you for that hedge of protection mm-hmm. around them. I yes. thank you that they'll get here safely and unharmed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you know within probably eight minutes, my daughter Savannah called me and said, Mama, a few minutes ago, a big tire came right at my window. Mm. And it almost just came through the window, but it dropped down and hit the front end. And mm-hmm. they were on the side of the road. But it's at the very moment, I'm convinced that Mama mm-hmm. prayed. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know what prompted her, but thank God she was listening. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that, so that mm-hmm. saved That's my kids' right. lives. Yeah, hearing the voice of God. Mm-hmm. Karen, what about you? How I know you've had to hear oh, the voice of the Lord. So many times. Real quick, I, just the most recent that comes to my mind. This Just a few weeks ago, I was on top of Prayer Mountain praying at my house. and. I am seeking the Lord about a situation, a lot of pressure involved. The Lord led me to the book of Gideon. I am reading this book and and I read where, because I'm saying, Lord, give me a sign. Give me a word. I need a sign from you of an answer. He shows me where he tells Gideon, if you need confirmation, if you're still concerned about fighting the Midianites, go into the camp tonight. He goes into the camp and he hears the enemy talking about a dream they had. So I'm like, God. He didn't get a burning bush or anything major. He just had a simple dream. Mm -hmm. So I went, God, give me a dream, a good dream, because I've been having bad dreams. Give me a good dream. So I think, I'm going to have my kids come together tonight and pray for a dream. We'll talk about it tomorrow. I'm driving home in my little golf cart. I decide to whiz into my mom's house. This is just a few days ago, and check on her. I walked in the house. Mom, I said, Mom, she says, I'm back here. I walked in, and she said, first thing out of her mouth, I had a dream last night. She said, it was a good dream. And she said, there was a sign, a big sign with a chair under it. And someone said to me, come sit in this chair. And she said, Karen, the sign said, peace, peace. And that was my word. (laughs) That is awesome. Let's talk a little bit, the levels of hearing God. You talk about, I'm going to name them off and you, I know we can't get to all of them, but you say everyone... Right. Motivational gift, right. gifts of the Holy Spirit, right. and ascension gifts. Talk a little right. bit about that. Well, everybody, everyone can hear from God. Ephesians 4, 14, 31, you can all prophesy. In order to prophesy, you have to hear from God. Mm-hmm. If, yes. uh, Revelation nineteen ten, the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. So on one hand, Jesus fulfilled prophecy. On the other hand, the moment you accept Jesus into your heart, there's a prophetic revelation that can come to you that you can hear the mind of God about various things that God wants you to do. So that's that's the, the common grace of prophecy, I, I would call that. Then there's then what many people call the ascension, or, I'm sorry, the the uh, motivational gifts, Romans 12, mm-hmm. that you can prophesy according to the proportion of faith that you have. So if you have that level of faith, you'll, you'll this type of gift is the ones that typically investigate uh, what is Gog and Magog? What is Ezekiel 38, 39? What does it have to do with Revelation 14? Mm-hmm. What does it have to do with Revelation 11 and Daniel 9 and 12? So end time events, and so you'll be interested in that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Then there's the gifts of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12 and 14 which is given by the Holy Spirit, and it is to, it's predictive in nature. Mm-hmm. It, it, uh, 
may involve other uh, revelation gifts that are included in the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, but it will tell you things to come. It is the John 16, 13, when he, the Holy Spirit has come, he will lead and guide you into all That's truth. Good. He will take what I have and show it to you and he will show you things to come. Then there's the ascension gifts. Many people call them the prophetic office or prophetic ministry, but prophetic office really isn't in scripture. We kind of use that as a defining, some word of definition, mm -hmm. but it's really an ascension gift of Jesus. Whereas the gifts of the Holy Spirit are given by the Holy Spirit, right. the ascension gifts are given by the Lord. And it's my belief or my conviction that you need to have some manifestation of the Lord in your life or mm -hmm. some angelic visitation to commission you into that arena. You, all, all of those gifts, basically, you can be called, then you're trained, and then you're commissioned. So just because you're called into a gift doesn't mean you're going to make it. Many are called, few are chosen, yeah. Jesus said. Mm -hmm. So you can have a gift and never make, make the commissioning end of it. You can have a gift and never pay, for, pay the price of, of brokenness, the, bri the price of contrition, the price of integrity, mm -hmm. all that. In every single gift you have, those are the hallmarks of maturity yeah, and of, wow. before you're gonna be commissioned. The, in any of those level of gifting, the calling is really quick, the training is really long and hard, and the commissioning is glorious, but it's also quick. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things you said um, before in, in talking about that, there are, there are individuals that have prophetic gifting. Mm -hmm. But um, explain that again, because I always love it, the, your whole satellite explanation of that. Well, yeah, it kind of defines the difference between a prophet and a psychic, is that God gives gifts in her without repentance. Even right. he gave gifts to Satan, but they're without repentance. Mm -hmm. God removed his authority from him when he fell, because authority is proximity-centric, mm -hmm. but he didn't remove his power from him. He mm -hmm. still has power. We have greater power, because authority trumps yes. power. Right. So we have greater power than he does. Through Jesus. Through Thank Jesus you, Christ, yes. exactly. But the, the gifts that are, that are given, the, the Lord wants us to, um, uh, to know that we didn't have anything to do with that gift. That's, that's all, that all comes yeah. from him, it's not yeah. a reward. Right. It all, also he wants us to understand that he may give us the gift, but he doesn't always talk to us. There's a, there comes a point, for example, with Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. He was uh, given a gift before he was conceived. And I'm not sure what all that means. I mean, I've got an idea, but there's a lot of ideas regarding it. But he was Probably before John he was the Baptist conceived, too. John the Baptist, yeah. certainly by the time he was in his mother's womb yeah. when Elizabeth met Mary, right. given the, this gift before they're born. And so uh, they had a choice as they were growing up. Do I serve God? Do I not serve God? Do I use this for God? Do I not use this for God? Right. It, it, God didn't create a zombie, a zombie prophet. He, mm -hmm. they, they had choices to make. Yes. So along the line, they had those choices. I think, in fact, I know there are many people in the psychic world who were given a gift by God that choose yeah. not to use that gift. Wow. Now, God does not give them the prophecy. He just gave them the gift. It was like the satellite dish. Yeah. You can have a satellite dish, but tune it into a different satellite. So you have God's satellite over here, but then there's an info network over here. So you go from one, when God quits sending a signal, you move to a different satellite. Right. And so a lot of the people, he gave them original gift, but because they did not follow him, he stopped sending the signal. Mm -hmm. The drive in them to find an answer for the, for the vacuum of revelation that they mm -hmm. have drove them to a different satellite. So they'll get stuff from a different satellite, but it's not revelation. But it's more like from based. familiar spirits satellite. It'd be familiar spirits. Make it look like revelation, right. yeah. but it's all knowledge. Right. Mm -hmm. So they may wow. have that, that gifting, right. but if they're not using that gifting in line with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, then the signal's blocked, he basically. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah. it's kind of like Jezebel. In Jezebel, God said I, in Revelation 2, I gave her time to repent, but she mm. would not. So God, God will let you use your gift wrong. I mean, he'll chasten you, he will correct you, he will discipline you, he will convict you. But at some point, if you don't listen to him, he stops and stops sending the signal. Mm. Let me ask you this question. Can people have that gifting from, from God and use it for a season, hearing from God, and then it get turned off and they start relying on their own flesh and another satellite. Sure, because the pressure that comes upon you, you build, you build your whole ministry around something or you build your life around something mm -hmm. and, and it quits. Yes. You've either got to quit doing what you're doing and go to flipping hamburgers or you've got to, yeah. to, to make up something. And by the, time, oh, by the time you stop, by the time God removes your gift from you, mm -hmm. you're so seared, mm. 
Mm. You, you don't even think about, wow. about anything. You think, well, my mind is God's mind, so I'll just say this. Yeah, so mm. what are wow. the signs that you've seen where someone was used prophetically, but for, along the way they got off track, and you, you can tell that it's a lot of their carnality and their flesh and not God, but at one time you had seen God mm -hmm. use them greatly. What, what are the kind of the, the characteristics and traits that you see in that individual that let you know, wow, this, this person may not be on track right now? Yeah, there's, there's three or four. Because this is something you have to guard yourself on. I, we talk about that. We do. Every day, yeah, my, yeah. My, those that are mentoring me talk about that. John yeah. Sanford, R.T. Kendall, others, mm -hmm. they'll, they address those issues with me. My mm -hmm. board addresses those issues yeah. with me. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, I'm, I'm thrilled that I have men who are concerned with that issue yeah. of, in my life. Is Accountability is very important. Yes. Yeah. One of the issues that you'll notice really quickly is lack of, lack of clarity in the word. They won't, they won't spend time in this, in this Bible. And so they don't talk about the Bible very much. They don't talk about what they've read. They don't talk about what they learned. I, I've, I've read this Bible for decades and I'm learning something new yes. every, single, every yeah. single day. And I, I teach my staff about things that I'm learning new every single day. So one, that's one sign. The second, another sign is lack of intimacy with God. They don't have the language of endearment to God. Mm -hmm. So you listen mm -hmm. to them and God doesn't say, they're, they're not using language. You know, when a husband and wife love each other, you can mm -hmm. feel the endearing terms that they use. Right. You don't speak of God with endearment. Mm -hmm. The third thing that I've noticed is that they don't have current events happening in their lives. They always talk about, well, 50 years ago, this happened to me. And, and it's not bad that you talk about 50 years ago because mm -hmm. Elijah, I mean, Ezekiel did that for, for decades. He talked about what happened to him at the, at the, at the brook. But he also had ongoing experiences experiences yes. with God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have ongoing experiences. Mm -hmm. So you, lack, of intimacy, lack of intimacy, lack of knowledge of the word, lack of endearing terms says I don't have a current deep relationship mm -hmm. with him and therefore you end up becoming a Matthew 7 prophet. Which is? Which is, didn't I prophesy in your name, oh, cast out yes. devils in your name, didn't I heal in your name? Mm -hmm. And what Jesus, about anger? depart from me, I never knew you. What about anger? Anger tends to be a result of that because what they end up doing is trying to make things happen in their own flesh mm -hmm. and they build a reputation that they're trying to protect. So now they get angry when things don't turn out the way that they want. And so they'll get angry at those near them. They'll get angry at anybody who chastises them or corrects them. Or questions they them. Questions them. They or become corrects them. They mm become -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh. That's, That's very interesting. Anything you want to ask on that? Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's loaded and that's incredible. Yes. And don't you think that uh, the fruit of the Spirit should surround their life? Yes. Sure, Galatians, Galatians 5, 22. What about, when it's, 20. what about when it's a critical spirit that's around it? Very, very critical spirit. No one is as terse or caustic as a prophetic voice out of faith. Good. No one. Mm. It is because they, what they end up doing is they end up using their gift to focus on flaws mm. and they make a scratch seem like it's the Grand Canyon. Okay. They, make, they, they okay. focus on minors and make it a major and they focus on majors and make them minors mm. and they turn littlest things into huge uh, issues. And so they'll, they'll, they, and they start focusing on the sin in another person's life because they have so focused on the sin mm -hmm. in their own life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so it becomes exposed. Right, so this is something Ooh. that those who have this calling and this gifting, they have to really guard against because yes. it right. has done more damage yes. to the mm -hmm. body of Christ to come in the name of God mm -hmm. and to be angry yes. and to right. say hurtful things. Right. And then at the end of the day, if they're questioned to say, well, I'm a prophet of God, this is just who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to yeah. say what God wants me to say. And it, yeah. but it's not, uh, you know, it's not helping anyone. It, it's it's actually hurting mm -hmm. people and hurting individuals. That doesn't sound like the heart of God to me. Mm -hmm. No, and I I challenged them to find one prophetic voice in the Scripture that was like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of the people there's like this this urban legend of prophetic people mm -hmm. that says, well, prophets are always this and this and this. And I'll admit yeah. prophets can be black and white yeah. sometimes, but they're black and white with love. Right. Oh, that's mm -hmm. not condemnation. Love. That's, See, that's so important. This yes. whole issue of love. When, when Paul wrote, I show you a more excellent way. This issue of love is, mm -hmm. is we have got to get back to prophetic people who are, whoever hears from God, at whatever level you hear from God, you need to hear from God with love because if God is love, love right. then yes. when he speaks, we need to have that 
permeate what we do. So there's kindness, there's gentleness, mm -hmm. well, all the fruit of the all Holy it, Spirit. All the love is. Everything, that Galatians 5, 20 through 22. I tell young, young people that I mentor, I said, don't you tell me you're spiritual until I see the fruit of the Spirit coming from you. Mm -hmm. That's good. To the degree of your fruit, I know you're spiritual. Yeah, yeah. that's good. You know, there was a, a young man that you and I, who, who will remain nameless, but you and I spoke mm -hmm. to and wanted to help right. bring some accountability. Yes. And um, as, it, as it has played out, he really doesn't want that. Want that, right. And so he surrounded himself with, yes, people right. have been very successful, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it, it, it's, it's just a, it's, it's an, an accident waiting to happen. It's, it's a catastrophe waiting You know, Balaam to happen. had a gift too. Balaam actually talked to God. God spoke audibly to Balaam. Balaam ended up being corrupt because he didn't have people around him to help him hear the ways of the Lord and he succumbed to greed. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things that young prophetic voices will succumb to is greed if they're not careful. Wow. That'll be the first fall. Too bad. Mm -hmm. Good. My goodness, that is amazing. What, uh, is, what is the difference between the gift of prophecy and then the ministry of a prophet? Okay, so the, the gift of prophecy is, uh, is edification, exhortation, and comfort. The ministry of the prophet, the ascension gift of the prophet, will add two more things at maturity. And this is where we really get, we have to watch this issue, and that is correction and direction. Mm -hmm. Where I've come to, to churches, and the Lord will, will move upon me, and I speak edification, exhortation, and comfort, but to the leader, I will come to the leader and says, and you know, when you did this two weeks ago, oh dear. that was that was not wise of you to do that. And the Lord, the Lord says this, if you'll do this, then he will do this. And so you have to bring correction and direction. The problem is young prophetic ministries, mm -hmm. which ascension gift level ministries are callings, will try to exercise authority that God hasn't given them because they don't have the favor to right. exercise it. Mm -hmm. So they end up becoming more like a policeman. Mm -hmm. So they exercise their authority by position versus exercising their authority by favor. Mm -hmm. Policemen, and I love policemen, don't get me wrong, but policemen <laughs> in the church turn out to be watchmen like mm -hmm. in, in the Song of Solomon. I got up to find my lover and the watchman beat me up. Yeah, and yeah. so they tend to beat up the body of Christ yeah, versus good. helping the body of Christ. Right, right. That's, that's so that's awesome. Amazing. We could, that's how amazing. fast is this yeah, gone? Yeah. Can you believe well, it? I'm like, I want to hear more. We're out of time. I want to thank John Paul for joining us at the table. For more information about his ministry, you can visit him online at streamsministries.com. And I also want to thank Cindy, Karen, Miss Doty, and April for being part of the table today. Thank you for watching. Remember, if there's an area in your life where you need to hear from the Lord, then just open up your heart. Amen. And God can speak directly to you. He can speak through His Word. Right. He can speak through um, other Christian friends, through your pastor at church. I mean, that's why it's important to be a part of a local church. But we also have prayer partners that are standing by as well, ready to pray with you if you need someone to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, John Paul. You promised you'll come yeah, back. I will come we'll back. talk more about this. I'll be back. All right, until next time, bye-bye for today. This has been a Daystar Television production.